Everyone needs a system that helps them get things done. And having that system live within the context of your existing notes and your work can be really powerful. And that is exactly what Capacity Task Management aims to do. We want to keep things simple. You need to be able to create a task wherever you are and see it wherever you need it so that you can just focus on getting things done. So let me give you an introduction to Capacity's Task Management today. We're in a project note to start off and if you want to add a task, all you need to do is do forward slash task and that will give you this task creation modal where you can add your first task. It will also create this task tab in the left hand sidebar and we will come back to that later. In order for this to work, you need to be on a paid plan. So Capacities Pro or Capacities Believer. Once you have done that, you can continue taking notes as you always have done. And now if an action comes up, you can add it. So for example, for this launch, we know that it's gonna be this week. And I know that as part of that, there are a few tasks. So I will write them down here. Here, I'm gonna use this shortcut and space to create the task and continue with my list. I'm also going to move this task down here and carry on. So to create a task now, I will use plus and task. Now, as a tip, if you want to get to that task modal in the middle, you can do command shift and T on Mac or control shift T on Windows. That will open it for you. Okay, so I've created some tasks here and you can see them within the context of my notes. When you're reviewing them, you might realize that there are some subtasks that you can add. You can use our original to-do blocks for that. So that's a different shortcut. It's the square brackets or forward slash to-do. And you can just hide those until you're ready to focus on that particular task. Now, there's a few buttons to explore here, but we'll start with the one on the left. This, at its simplest, allows you just to check tasks off. So if it is white like this, the task is open or if it's complete, it will be coloured in like that. This is the most simple status setup that we have. Open and done. And you will have seen that in the background whilst I was creating these tasks, not only do I have them in the content here, I now have a task tab. And when I click on this, I get taken to a zoomed in view of just the tasks without any of the content around it. This comes with several built in sections that you don't have to set up. And this open one lets you zoom in on, as guest, all open tasks just for this project. And from here, you can really focus on executing on this task list. And once you have completed them, it will go away. So you are always focused on what you should do next. So if you have a lot of big meeting notes or big project notes, this can be really helpful. And you can just switch between the two views as you need. Of course, the tasks are kept up to date. Now a theme you'll see throughout this video are built in views. We have several of them. And of course, right now, this is an open task view just for this project, but you can also go and have a look at all of your open tasks across your capacity space by clicking on this task link and going to the open part of the dashboard. So this has pulled all of my open tasks together from across the space into one view. And if I complete something, we'll see it leaves the view and it goes to this completed task section. If you click on it, it will tell you exactly when you completed it as well. So again, at its most basic, your task list can be open or done, but you can see from the right hand side here that some things have extra statuses and that might be more useful for your systems or workflows. If that's the case, let's open this as an example. You can set the status with the status property so I'll set this to in progress. And if you create a new task, again, that was with command shift and T, you can set the status here. If you would like different statuses or to change the appearance of the existing ones, head into the task management section and go to the status customization bit. You can add or remove them and you can also change their color and add an icon if you would like. Now these statuses work fantastically with Kanban boards. And if we head back into this task tab and I click on the status here, you can see all of my tasks, but now grouped and displayed by the status that they have. And this is a great bird's eye view of all of your tasks and you can start processing them as well. Now, when you're doing this, you might find like I do that there is a few tasks in progress just for one specific project. And at that point, leaving this bird's eye view and going into the status view for the particular project can be very helpful. 
So here I'm switching from the open view to status and I can focus just on completing these tasks. And this Kanban board helps me literally move along in my workflow. And I don't have to see the other tasks. I'm just focused on what I need to get done now. We'll head back into this dashboard and have a look at this context section. We call task management and capacities contextualized task management because it's really about where the tasks are and where they show up. And what this does is it groups all of your tasks that are open by where they have been found. And this gives you something easily to scroll through. And for example, much like in the previous screen, I can see many things related to the task management launch. And that is a great indicator that I should click on that and get focused on it. We also have some tabs related to scheduling. So let's talk about that next. I'll open up this task again and we've already filled in the status property and the context is automatically filled in, but we'll come back to that later. And I'm going to add a date here for when it needs to be done, which is today. Now, if I go into today's daily note, you can see the tasks that I need to think about today and the tasks that I have done today. This is based on information I've put into my tasks on previous days and I'm just seeing that focused view here. They are ordered automatically by importance and that is where the priority comes in. So for me, filming the video is the ultimate priority. And if I could just click on this flag a few times, that sets the priority and that list is then going to rearrange itself. So when I come into my calendar and I see the tasks that I have to get done, I don't have the cognitive load of working out what I need to do right now. This will tell me again, based on information that I've put in already. So as I've shown, you can just click the buttons here, but if you're creating a new task, such as this one, if you have a priority already in mind, you can just use exclamation marks. You see how they change color, the more important it gets. And for example, if you want to schedule that for tomorrow, you can write that and it will be scheduled automatically. So it's converted that into a date, a priority, and I've added the status. If I click add task, I've captured it, which is good because now it's out of my head. I don't need to think about it, but I'm not seeing it today and it's not scheduled for today. It's actually scheduled for tomorrow, which I wrote when I captured the task. So it disappears until I need it. Now, a couple more things about this view. The first one is that anything that you've done today automatically collects here as well. So this is a great way of getting a task log of what you've done without having to create it. It just comes here automatically. Another thing is if you have overdue tasks, they will go to the top of the list as well. So let's say that I should have done that on Friday. That list is now going to rearrange itself and that will go to the top of the list because I've missed that scheduled date. Now you can either choose to do it first or in my case, amongst the context of everything else I have to do today, I know that it's not important, it isn't going to happen, so I can just change the scheduled date. Then it moves away, I don't think about it, and again I get that clarity that we so often need when working on our tasks by just seeing what I need to think about, which is these three tasks here. Now the final thing about this view is if you later realise that these things can't get done today, you can just click on this arrow and you can move all the open tasks to another time. So that's a nice way of ending your day. It could be part of your review process. Then tomorrow, when I open up capacities, I see again, only what I need to see. And again, ordered by the priority. Now that today view that you saw is the same as what you'll see in this task inbox. And if there's just a general date assigned to a task, clicking on that scheduled date will show you everything but grouped by its relative time period, which gives you a bit of a longer roadmap of what you have planned. If there is anything without a date, that is what this inbox will show you, grouped by when it was created. From here, you can process your tasks. So you might want to assign statuses, the date and the priority, etc. And then it will leave the inbox because now it has been processed and show up where it makes sense for it to show up. And all of this happens behind the scenes. So what you're thinking about is just what do I need to do? Does it have a status to add? Do I need to schedule it for a date? And what priority is it? And the context most of the time is done for you as well. But let me use this task to show you what you can do with it if it's helpful for you. 
So again, most of the time, this context property is filled in for you. So when I was writing down my notes about the task launch, I added this task. And because I created that task within that project, the context property was automatically filled out. But in this particular case, it involves Rika, one of my colleagues. And that means that, yes, it's helpful for me to see the task related to its project, but it would also be helpful to see it on Rika's note. So to do that, I can just click on that context property and I can link to anything else in my space, such as here. And when I do that and I open Rika's note, I see the open task that I have with her. And it doesn't matter which project they're part of. What matters here and the context here is that it's to do with Rika. So when we next meet, I can open this and we can focus specifically on what we need to get done together. So if we schedule a meeting for tomorrow, we can update that, say this is important. And not only will I see this when I now open Rika's page, I see it with the task launch as well. Again, ordered for me. And if I go to the calendar for tomorrow, I'll see it there as well. So this is contextualized task management incapacities. We are using what we know from other videos and from working with incapacities where we can link to what's important. And for these tasks, what we want to do is link to the places we need to see them so that it's easier to execute on them. So wherever I am, whether I'm in my daily note, the project or Rika's page, I will see that we need to do this task together. Once I've done it, I simply check it off and I focus on what else I need to do. And that list is ready for me as well. So that is an introduction to contextualized task management incapacities. If you have any questions about this, please let me know in the comments below.